The house is fantastic, it just fits our need. Perfect to start a family. They hired a home inspector to come in and take a look at their home before they purchased it. Smart move. We've got a beautiful, stunning bathroom and we can't use it at all. The inspector said, a little bit of plaster paint, you can fix it up. Well, things crack and things fall apart for a reason. How much did you charge it? Curious, inspector. $321. So what kind of recourse is there when something is wrong? Zero. We're worried that we're gonna have to rip our bathroom out. It's heartbreaking. Homes. Look at this. Is that garbage or what? Look at you buggers. They haven't vented anything. This is ridiculous. Everything is wrong. I've decided now to gut it. Take it all down. My comes I love it. <laughs> me too. You want a good job to keep me in shape? I'll be a contractor. Unacceptable. God, I love my job. <laughs>We put our condo up for sales. We decided to look for houses and looked at a range of fixer-upper to fully finished to semi-detached to bungalows. And um, after probably looking at 70, maybe 80 houses, we saw this house. The house is fantastic. It just fits our need. Perfect to start a family and, you know, everything, like the floors, the kitchen. New kitchen, new bathroom. It was pretty much turnkey. And our bid was conditional on an inspection. We had an inspection the next day. And uh, the inspector said everything looked in great condition, and we took the house. In this case, the inspector walked around, pointed out a few things, and Max had said to himself, I see a couple of issues I'm unsure of. And the inspector said, not to worry. A little bit of plaster paint, you can fix it up. Well, things crack and things fall apart for a reason. So obviously the inspector just was not qualified. When you buy the house, and you start spending some time in it, that's where you start seeing what the house is really all about. What the gap between my countertop and my wall growing. It's wider and wider, wider and day. wider. We knew we had to change a few tiles in the bathroom and we knew we had to fix a few cracks that were in the ceiling in our kitchen. So we called somebody in to do that. And while he was here, he mentioned to us that he suspected there was a lot more going on and that the renovations weren't done um, as well as they should have been done. Hello. Hello. Sandra. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Mr. Holmes. Max, nice to see you Good again. Good to see you again, yes. Hi. Come on in. And when we talked to uh, this contractor, he kind of went that as well. You guys, this is not just a patch-up job. You gotta, you gotta dig it out. You gotta basically open up the ceiling. You gotta look at what's coming out and it's gonna be major, major work. This is the crack that uh, keeps uh, ever expanding. And then from where we moved in three months ago, it's slowly walking yep, its way it keeps cracking. traveling. And do we see water coming out of here ever? Never. Never. No. Nope. Lucky thing. thing. And literally in our report, like the inspector said, you know what, it's cosmetic, it's a patch job, paint it and you're done. If you're gonna hire a home inspector, you're gonna have to make sure he's been in this business for years. What I wanna hear is he's been a contractor, renovator, worked in the construction industry. Until you're confident that this man knows what he's talking about, you don't wanna pay him. How much did you charge it? Curious, inspector. $321. For three, three hours. hours. Simple plaster work and painting should fix this problem, he says. Bad advice. So what kind of recourse is there when something is wrong? Zero. You've hired the man to come in and give his opinion to you. So it's not like you can go back on him and say, this is gonna cost me $25,000 to fix, I need you to pay for it. It doesn't work that way. The first thing I notice is the pot lights in the bulkhead above the top. They do have some sort of a support beam in there holding your floor joists crossing over this way. But I really wanna take a look at that. And we've drywalled right over the old. God, I don't like that. So anytime I see drywall right over the old, it tells me all they've done is a makeup effect. And we try and make it yeah. look good rather than take it down and do it right through. Again, the first time. And one thing that we didn't notice when we did house inspector is how the major support beam, as you'll see downstairs in the basement to up here to the, the, uh, the bathroom upstairs, is They're not gone. lining up. It shows sagging, it shows structure problems. We're seeing cracks. That tells me they've weakened the structure. Let's go take a look downstairs. I want to take a look at the structure. Then we'll go upstairs and take a look at your bathroom. Okay, they've done a lot of changes here. Well, I don't see a continuous support. I see the ductwork going across there. That's a bad sign. We don't have a continuous weight load. That is for sure. This is the support beam underneath that I was looking for. But I can tell because I see that there's duct lines coming off of here running over above, that tells me there's not a continuous support. I don't see it. 
There is no wood structure directly to this beam. All right, let's go take a look upstairs. Jeez, I feel like I'm in a little house. <laughs> they really spared no expense in the bathroom when they did their renovations. Um, the materials that they used, the faucets are all high end. Um, the marble countertop and all the tiles from floor to ceiling. And we're worried that we're going to have to rip our complete bathroom out to find out um, what's going on up there. It's just, you know, it's heartbreaking. Hopefully I can repair everything from underneath and I do not have to damage that bathroom. It would be such a shame to have to gut that bathroom. That's a very expensive tile. This is the masterpiece of the masterwork of the house. I mean, a lot of money went into the renos. Beautiful tile, beautiful glass, but already I see things. What's happened here is the weight load of the water in your body has carried and pushed the tub down and split the tile here. And we have a nice crack right there, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you don't notice any leaks though, eh? Nope. But when we talked to uh, our contractor, he basically looked at that and again, the way the inspection went was just purely cosmetics. You remove those two cracked tile, you mm -hmm. put two new ones and you're done. When we talked and uh, you look at what's happening downstairs, I think it's a little bit more than just a couple cracks. Yeah, he told us to stop using the shower altogether. Wise move. We bought a house. We got engaged, we got engaged the day we moved in. Uh, like, we, we spent every single penny to be able to do everything we want to do. And knowing very well there's some stuff to be done, but like, I don't have funds to do a major renovation. Yeah, and we've got a beautiful, stunning bathroom, and we can't use it at all. I call it the no-door washroom. We have like a pocket door that was never installed. We, we stopped painting, we stopped the furniture deliveries, so everything's we, on hold. Our plans are getting married this, this year, yep. vanished completely. Yep. We're gonna have to pull down your temper glass Unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to give you a whole new bottom step in here. Give you a pocket door for sure, but I want to start with downstairs. We're gonna to have to do a major inspection here. I'm gonna to have to pull that ceiling down, take a look at what they've done with the structure, pull out your cabinets, everything that's in my way, pull down the mm -hmm. bulkhead, take a look at everything that they've done here, and all start from scratch to the point where we're gonna beef it up from the basement up, and I'm just hoping I don't have to do too much to your bathroom. We're gonna make a mess. I'll bring you back to show you what we're doing here, and we're gonna make it right for you. Okay, Max? Thanks. Thank you very much, man. Alessandra? Thank you. All right. And this is wet. It is wet. We have a leak. This is supposed to be a vent or the shower. Oh, you buggers, they haven't vented anything. What we thought was turnkey, fully renovated house is turning into a nightmare. If you're gonna hire a home inspector, you're gonna have to make sure he's been in this business for years. Simple plaster work and painting should fix this problem, he says. Bad advice. Right off the bat, you can see it looks like we possibly have a structure issue. We'll looks see. like some water damage up there, maybe. Yes. Right here. Yes. Now this is the tub upstairs, and then there is the shower stall directly above here. Right. We're more than likely have to drop the ceiling in here. Just uh, I'd like to see everything from underneath the uh, tub, the shower, and I have a bad feeling we're going to have to lose the ceiling in the dining room as well. We'll open up the bulkhead, take a look, so we see what we're dealing with. I really don't have a choice here. I'm going to have to open this up, remove the drywall, do a complete inspection of the structural problem. The beam is there, up over top of here. I tried to structurally support it here and not on the outside wall. But we know from downstairs, the void that shows above the beam, there's nothing continuous supporting this point to the beam. I would have used the outside wall. Oh, somebody even put a date in there, eh? So we've had two renovations. We are gonna make a mess no matter how we look at this. Lots of braces in there, that's for sure. Garbage in the ceiling. We're always having to do a patch here. I'm just trying to save myself some work. If I keep the patch area square, then I can just fit it in with one piece. If I just go ahead and cut it, I'm gonna have a hard time uh, putting in my patch later. Somebody's repaired this area. And this is wet. It is wet. We have mold, we have a leak. I hate these guys already. Oh, it's not a nice thing to see. I knew we'd find illegal wearing. This is saturated, this drywall. Oh, there's so much garbage up there, that's why it didn't leak through, it was just absorbing and everything. Oh. This is just brutal. I mean, it's like, where do you get off? I'm gonna pull this back to where they've cut up the joists. What are you trying to see? This double beam here, how far they've tied it back. Right to the next here. one. Do 
You see a joist hanger on it? It's not really fastened very well. He does have a double joist hanger and he only has one nail. So they've cut floor joists everywhere, which as long as they use joist hangers, that's great. But we only see one nail, one nail into the joist, into the header. That's not gonna do a lot of support. It's being held up by the metal here, which is not good enough. Double joist, all they did was put on another two by eight right here against the old one. By the time I get to the other side, it's not even touching the floorboard. They didn't even carry the load over. They just cut it out. Well, that would explain all the cracks in the grout up there, that's for sure. We had too much flexibility in the floor. The three inch ABS, they went through all the floor joists. You don't do that. It should have been a bulkhead here, bring it down underneath. We're gonna have to cut this back to the beam so we can reinforce all the joists in this area. This is supposed to be vent or the shower. What oh, you buggers, they haven't vented anything. Obviously, no permits. We have two compression shutout valves inside the wall. Oh, no way. It should have been at least a solder joint. Again, this is an area that you want it to be accessible. Oh, you're lucky. Okay, it's dead. It's an, old, it's an old one. Why don't you take it out? What does it take to remove this? Nothing. Look at the ceiling. It just bows and goes across. You know, it's not perfectly level, but look at look at the gap we have. Like, what kind of crap is that? I, I, they didn't even shim it. We've had, obviously, a leak off here. They just used the cheap plastic uh, waste and overflow on this. At this point, I'm fine with it, as long as it doesn't leak, which we'll do a test on. Plug the tub. Let's fill it right to the overflow. This is your hot and cold supply line here. So the shutoff is in behind here. How are you supposed to get back in there? And then the motor for this sucker would be around here somewhere. No access panel for the motor. Fill the top, plug the drain up over the overflow so we can determine if we're leaking from the overflow out. If we're not, then I get them to stop. Let's, let's hear the jets going, run it for 60 seconds, make sure we have no water coming out of the jets. Third, pull the drain and let's see what happens when all that rush of water comes down. Sean, we're leaking. I don't see it coming down the tub. Where is the drip coming from? It's actually coming right from the drain. So what it's doing is it's going in the overflow, rushing down the overflow, pushing back into the bottom drain of the tub and overflowing out, which means when you pull that drain and the water comes rushing down, we're gonna leak again. Okay, Sean, drain it, please. Okay. Look at this, look at this. Oh, big time, right around the flange. Okay, that's easily fixed, I like that. But, you know, this is a new job, $25,000 worth of crap that is just leaking everywhere. And you know, the only reason this didn't flood through the drywall, because there was so much crap on top of this, that would just absorb all the water. Seven minutes this tub is still draining, because there's no air behind water. It's not rushing it down the drain, so it takes forever to drain your tub, forever to drain your sink, forever to flush your toilet over and over again until all your waste is removed. If I don't see a whirlpool going down that toilet, it's not vented. That bathroom upstairs sold them. And had I walked in here, I would have said, run. Don't buy this home. There's a story, eh? What's the story, Mike? The story is, is the contractors that were here before smoke. They like coffee. They don't use the dump. They don't know what a vacuum cleaner is. Are we ever going to pull down any drywall that doesn't have any garbage? What do you see, Sean? This beam here should be over over here load bearing. At least they attempted to double it up. Attempted was the issue. What's this? That's a bad junction. Is that a piece of knob and tube going That's in there? Knob and tube. It's not a licensed electrician. That's for sure. We're live. Yeah. We're live on the knob and tube. It really is a fire waiting to happen. If for any reason somebody plugs something in there that requires too much power, such as an electric heater. What happens is, is it heats up all junction points or any ends to the lines. And if that's touching all that garbage up there in the ceiling, what does it take? It doesn't take much to light it up. See, structurally, we've had cracks all across here and up. It needs movement. I don't think it's carried on the outside wall. I don't know yet. I gotta pull down this side just to look at that. Now, why am I seeing water on this side when we had a leak here? That's scary. What does that tell me? Shower's here. When that drips, hits the ceiling, runs this way, comes down here. So not only is the tub leaking, the shower's leaking. Which again, is why I'm gonna have to pull this ceiling. I don't think that's structured to the outside wall at all. All they had to do was structure that to the outside wall, and that would have been great against the floor. Because they put the two two by eights here, they used three of them, three two by tens. I like it, I like it. However, this is only on the floor. There's nothing continuous from the floor to the beam underneath, which is under the floor joists. Picture it. Floor joists run this way, underneath this oak floor. They run this way. 
This beam goes on top of the floor, in between the floor joists. There's a structured beam there. Had they have taken these three and put it on the outside, it would be acceptable. So I don't think we have too much of a structure issue here as much as we do here. Because they cut through these floor joists here and weaken this structure right here, very small zone, but they've weakened the structure where the heavy load is and that's the tub. What we really want to do is continue that toilet line across here, which now they don't have the room because of everything they've done. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in my plumber and my electrician, see what we can do to solve problems here. I'm going to pull down all the two by twos, restructure it, re-level the ceiling, solve the leaks in the tub and the shower. We'll take it from there. Live, 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 live. Look at this. It's pouring out of there. Had I walked in here, I would have said run. Don't buy this home. Today, we are going to bring in the electrician, take a look at the electrical. So I'll have my plumber step in, see the changes we have to make on the plumbing to get proper ventilation in there. We'll get that tempered glass down, get that curb up in the shower. Uh, we'll get the rest of this cleaned up, cut out the two by twos, restructure the uh, floor joists. Bit by bit, we'll make it happen. Well, that's a good sign. The shower is not leaking. Okay, Sean, you can shut it off. The shower's not leaking. No. Good. It sure looks like it's got corrosion all over it, but there's nothing coming down. You ran it for a good amount of time, but it's not dripping now. It's a big drip of that stalagmite came off the. That's calcium. Until the electricians get here, let's cut out these two by twos, clean up all the floor joists here. I'm gonna go upstairs and start pulling down that tempered glass. One thing about tempered glass, I mean, you can hit it with a hammer directly on the face, you won't break it, but if you hit it on the edge at all with anything, even my screwdriver, this will shatter into a million pieces. And it's heavy. What's happened at the step, we'll be able to see more as I pop it away, just to see whether or not they brought the membrane up and over the top. See that? Look at this, the wood's already getting it. They did not. So we've had water going down here. And that's a shame, look at the water in there. That is just saturated. If there is no membrane here, we've got to pull it all up. Clear silicone is extremely strong. It serves two purposes. It'll give a watertight seal. It will also be an adhesive. I grab some glasses. So it does explode, it doesn't go into my eyes. Eventually, this wood would just completely rot away, It'd be full of mold, so it's, it's good that we've caught it now. I don't see any mold build up right at this point. I'm just hoping that they do have membrane here. I should see it in the corner here because I want to see it come up the wall. And I have a funny feeling there's just no, no membrane. I do. Well, they have membrane. There's our membrane right there, and it's very short, but I can work with this. I really don't want to pull this bottom off, but it looks like I'm going to have to. And I'll just pull out the rest of the tiles and prep to do a whole new step. It's possible I can salvage these tiles. Oh, we had mold. Not only did they use mastic, which says right on the bucket not to be used in a water area, and it says it, so read the directions, it helps. The drywall is just saturated, just saturated. Mold on the inside. This just blows me away. I mean, this is a new bathroom, and look at how dark that mold is. Like, I don't even want to touch it. The main problem here is structure. These three should be here, supported on the foundation wall, and then it'll hold the load up here. They shim this up with two pieces of half inch plywood, completely unprofessional. Every re renovation we do, it's like you're coming on to like three or four guys that kind of did bad workmanship, and you know, it's, it just compounds the problem until it's like, you know, and then somebody that doesn't know comes into this house and buys it for half a million dollars, and you're just like, oh, you know, sorry about your luck, you know, we'll do what we can. Massive amount of water in there. That's okay, we'll let that uh, stay open and dry out. They laid quite a bit of cement there, didn't they? I was gonna ask you about that. Looks like they laid it twice. They had a first pour here and yeah. then a second pour here. You can see it right across. Right? It wasn't leaking when we were running water down that drain, which is now making me wonder if this is where it's leaking from. 
Well, Harvey, I'll start it off with a simple leak on this side. Plaster cracking, stuff like that. And they uh, called us in to take a look. Well, there's no vent on the toilet, no vent on the tub, no vent on the shower. Compression fitting here, it's right. leaking like a sieve right from this point. Compression fittings up inside the wall there, shut off. What they've done here, too much of a bit. Oh, it is leaking. Oh. I don't know where that's leaking from. It's leaking now. Is that a trap downstairs? I've never noticed a trap on that. No, there isn't. There's no trap on this? Holy, you're right. <laughs> there's no trap. No, there's not. So we've got to cut a hole in the ceiling. How can you put that in there without a trap? I mean, that's asinine. No license, no permit. No permit. I mean, this is a, just a cluster up here of crap. Can we solve this issue? Oh yeah, we just need to cut that off and cut this off and remove all that crap and do it properly. Buddy. Okay, I'm gonna start cutting all this copper. I'm gonna cut out uh, all this copper, actually, because it's just the spaghetti factory of how they tie it in. Not to mention it's all green, so we're gonna replace it all. Right now, the object is to open up space and work in. Well, I really didn't want to damage the ceiling, but I have no choice. I'm gonna have to cut an access hole under the shower stall here, uh, not only to access the trap, but to find out where it's leaking. Here we have in a cross section of modern architecture was the original sculpted ceiling. It must now be removed. Look at the cross section of the ceiling. Lath, plaster, this is the heaviest part right here. And after that, we had the new drywall, which was about uh, 30 years ago. And then they do about three eighths of plaster over top. And then drywall. That's two and a half inches of material right there. If we would have taken the ceiling down, it would weigh like a ton. Oh, now we can see it really well. There's like a hole here. In the membrane. That's where it's coming from, isn't it? We can see how much calcium is on that. Isn't that phenomenal? This is multi thousands of dollars to fix this problem. We bought the house thinking that it was going to be like our dream Turn home. Turnkey. Yeah. Like it said in the real estate brochure. Turn, yeah. Turnkey. Unfortunately, they ran the toilet across here, brought it through, and then punched it through the floor joist. So it is weakened the structural integrity, which is one of the reasons we have an issue with the tub. Well, we're going to be staying with my mom for a while. We can't stay here. You know, obviously the bathroom's not functional, the kitchen's not functional. So we're going to be staying at my mom's until we can get settled again. Uh, no trap in the shower, no vent. Did you ever notice any really bad odors? Yeah, yeah we did notice a little bit. That's because yeah. there was no trap stopping the methane gas from the sewers up into your home. The health issues alone, yeah. I mean, what if, what if we waited a couple of months? Would we have gotten sick over time? I don't know. In the brochure that the real estate company supplied for your home here, uh, it said no knob and tube is in the house. Right. Yeah. You have knob and tube. They drywalled over the old and covered everything up. We just feel completely ripped off. It looks stunning on the outside, and then when you start peeling it back, it's completely rotting. So it's devastating. I pulled out probably two cups of water for the tub. Okay, Two but, cups of water. Yeah, but there was so much garbage in the ceiling that it was absorbing the water. That's why you didn't see such a, a uh, massive amount of water come okay, down. Yeah, yeah. It's just a complete mess just to fix a small problem. Mm. Plumbing, structural, electrical, maybe it's not so small after all. I feel better that knowing that Mike is going to do a great job. We're going to turn the bad luck that we inherited. Into good to, luck? Yeah. <laughs> we'll turn it into good energy. So now I'm going to do my damnedest, not only to fix everything, but to make it look really good to give them back their, their hopes, their dreams that they did buy the right home. I understand you would really like it. Some granite or a slate countertop or something, a new nice. countertop. <laughs> so we're working on that for you. So this whole corner's coming down. We're gonna have all new plumbing here, right from the toilet through, shower through, vented up upstairs, all new electrical, new ceiling in the kitchen. I'm going to drop the ceiling today. We've really got to get to the toilet area so we can vent it properly. So this is coming down and a brand new countertop for you. But by the end of this, I think you're gonna like it. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. I come in here and just butcher this place up, and then it sells for half a million dollars. They wanted to get married in the backyard, now they gotta hold off on the wedding. All well, because they bought a house that just needs a ton of work. Electrical and the plumbing, that's a surprise. That was unexpected. We had no idea that was an issue. How would you know? It's I, all covered up. Downside is, is I feel really bad, but I look beyond that. I think, you know, I look with hope. Let's get everything out of this room at this point. Let's really cover this floor well, because we're going to drop this ceiling. Let's see if we can keep the lights. We're going to pull out these cupboards here. I have to open up that uh, void there so we can reroute the plumbing today. And it's going to tie into the stack behind the cupboard. We're going to vent it directly up through the wall in the bedroom. It's supposed to be a fairly simple job, which has escalated into a, a massive job, to be honest. 
These little brackets here are meant to push out like this, and then when you tighten up the screw, it snug this, this down. You see how it pulls? But because they've got 6,000 layers of drywall up here, this operation can't work. So what they've done with, with it is it basically just jammed it in place. And it's, it was just really kind of just sitting there. So yeah, no, they're not installed properly. When you're pricing out this kind of renovation, you don't give the homeowners an option of going over top of plastic mathing. You just don't do it. Right. There's just no money to be saved doing that. And that's, you know, that's one of the scams that they pull. Well, it's going to cost an extra uh, $2,000 if we have to pull down the plaster and laugh. And the homeowner thinks, well, you know what, $2,000, I think I'll save my money on that. Good contractors don't even give them that option. They just say, we got to take it down to the studs and we're starting with new drywall. That's how the good guys do it. There's a nice old wallpaper, eh? About as old as the house. Oh, you got to look at this. Look at this. More junctions tied up with drywall tape. The more we take down, the more we find. Another illegal junction in the wall. I guess they think that they put it in the box, that it's fine. Let's just take a look at their junction here. License guy wouldn't do that. We have a spliced wire right here, okay? We have one spliced right here. We have a junction in this wall here. We have the voids. Run the wire down, fish it down, bring it through the uh, floor joist, direct it to the electrical panel. To do it this way, it just blows me away. Yeah, this is going to be a nightmare. I decided to take down the ceiling for a few reasons. We have to gain all access to the plumbing so we can reroute it, make sure we do proper venting. There's too much knob and tube in there, and the other guys that did this work did not remove it. We're going to. It's completely unlevel, and I can't stand it. I'm going to fix it. Took about 10 minutes. Sandy, how are you, buddy? Good, Mike, how are you? Not so bad, we just cleaned up this hell of a mess. So it gives you a perfect opportunity to uh, pull out the knob and tube that's here. We can see the way they cut that. Yeah, I see they have some up there now. As you can tell, right up in here, they picked up right off the knob and tube and they powered it. Yeah. So we're gonna have to get a power source up there to do something. They powered we'll... upstairs, too. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to work. Thanks, buddy. All right, Mike. We're gonna cut access to put the vent in. We'll drill through the bottom plate, the top plate, get it up into the attic. We'll cut a hole downstairs and we'll feed it from below. You can see our stud here. So let's make sure we cut from approximately here, okay, to this side of the plate. Okay. Thank you, pal. We're gonna have to cut a hole in the wall just to feed the vents up through the attic. Uh, Benji's gonna have to take out the drain of the toilet so we're gonna restructure the floor joists. Look at this, it's a mess. Basically, they have nothing grounded in here. Bit of a disaster. They've left you no wires in here to work with. You should have them all stripped back. At least you have access to these lines. So if it's not grounded here, then it's not going to be grounded up at the box. If the box gets uh, energized, right, it's not going to short the circuit, which it should. So someone can go there, touch the fixture if it's hanging down, and now he's energized. Energized means he's going to get a short. When you see stuff like this, it just pisses you off because this isn't the way you rewire a house. Basically, we want to eliminate the knob and tube that's in here because it's all single conductors that are going throughout the house and they're all spliced. If you look at some of the joints, they used to have all the wires coming in and they would just branch out. And then that's where it fails. The solder joint gets loose, heats up, and then that's where you cause your fires. The, uh book on this house from the real estate company says there's no access to the attic, which means now I've got to cut a hole. Oh, my job gets better and better every moment here. <sighs> okay, we can actually come up here because it is only going to be inch and a half, so it's looking like to drill it right down there. 24 inches away from the drain. That should be just enough to get in there and glue on a 90 to it and bring it over. It's hard enough to get the vent upstairs through the attic, but I don't even have access to the attic. Now I've got to make one. These are snap cutters or chain cutters. It actually has a series of cutting wheels all the way around. It forms a circle of cutting wheels around the pipe. And just by forcing them, it actually crushes the pipe until it pops up. 
and off she comes. Nice clean cut. Okay, we've taken out the old cast iron fitting that was here, snapped in a new 4x3Y. We're going to use this to pick up the toilet and the uh, fixtures behind me. We'll put a filler piece in here. We'll bring this out in the bulkhead and pick up the toilet behind us. Yeah, we want to keep this at this elevation, but we want to bring it down here under the joist. So we're going to put these two fittings here, 90 to 45, across and then tie it back into the stack. And then we'll uh, just box it in. You'll never know what was there. Mike, shouldn't this membrane have been like inside this drywall? You are very right, my friend. You know what that means. That means this drywall is going to get wet. Well, it sure does. These guys are real scumbags. If too much water was sitting in here, then it would eventually get in and wick its way up the wall. I'm assuming we're going to have to replace it right from this point down. Won't be easy, but we will. We'll be able to do it. With uh, Ben putting up the level there, we can see that this is the, the low point. We're going to laminate uh, to the laser line, sister uh, two by six onto the existing, which will bring it down to the laser line, to get a level and true ceiling. We cut out all the plumbing and rerouted it. As you can see, we beefed up all the floor joists. We dropped that down to give us the room we need for everything, as well as leveling the ceiling. We did what they didn't do, and that's got permits. We separated the toilet, separated the shower, separated the tub. That requires three separate vents. They'll tie into each other and go up to a three inch line in through the roof, which we're going to do today. Toilet's vented, the shower stall's vented, the tub's vented. I'm joining them all up, bringing it up here. I'll have to convert all this to three inch and put a new roof vent on. And now we gotta pull up that shower floor. After doing many more tests, we had water run just very lightly down the drain because we want to determine whether or not we're leaking from this area, and we are. So that's a major problem. I don't want to just do a caulking beat around there because that's not gonna solve it. Water could bleed through the grout and still get underneath it. And now I've gotta pull down the bottom row of tiles and I gotta redo the whole floor. The inspector didn't like that the membrane wasn't up high enough. It should be up above the floor, which is totally understandable, but I wish there was a way I could fix that drain without doing this. I know I can't. No, I can't save the tiles because we're going to drop that down, which means I have to cut new tiles down to the floor. 18 bucks a tile. What they did was there was no bottom edge. They did not bring the drywall right to the floor to have it braced at the bottom. So all I did was push it in, which will never, ever keep a seal. That's it all in the center. Even on the other side of the taps, it does have a piece on the bottom here. Without putting proper supports behind the tiles on the wall, the grout's guaranteed to crack. So we'll add some nailing edges and some concrete board. It'll give it more strength. That makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Brutal, eh? Well, we have one, two, three different layers here. Obviously, they're mixed here. There's more sandy in the top. Yeah. Rocky down there. Yeah, and then very hard on the bottom. Most guys out there are just gonna pour a simple one inch pad. You can see that they were high up here. They put in the curve and they cut it off rather than wrapping up over the curve. That makes no sense to me. It just goes to show how porous concrete is or cement. What it does is absorbs water. This piece was on the bottom in the corner right there. And it just is still wet. This was 24 hours later, and you can see, see the darkness? It just shows that it's soaking in the water, and that's why it took so long when we first put the water down the drain, we thought, okay, it's not leaking. And it was hours later that it started to drip because the concrete grabbed it, soaked it in, and finally allowed it to go down the center on the bottom around the drain and not through the drain. What's the funniest part here that we see, guys? This appears to be a patch. Yeah, and they've glued it down. You don't patch that. It has to be one piece. So obviously they screwed up their first cut and then patched it. No way that's going to hold water. They even have rusted screws that even got under the membrane. I want to make sure I get a nailing edge in the back here to really to support this, this area here, here, so we don't get a hit on it. Because uh, the concrete bed was about four inches off the floor, we now have to do new tiles from this point down, new floor, new curb, new everything. And I mean, I'd love to take it all down, but too much money in tile to ruin. So we'll fix what we can. And something else they missed was the membrane was supposed to be sandwiched in between these two pieces here with a sealant, but they didn't do that. They just cut around it. That's why they had a problem. Well, this stuff is uh, cement board and like cement. It's not waterproof. However, it is a uh, heck of a lot better than gypsum board or dent shield or drywall, which is gypsum too. But what, we, what we'll do is we'll put the uh, curdy membrane, which is waterproof over top of it, which we'll tie into the shower pan and everything will be happy and waterproof. 
I just want it to be safe. And I mean, I'm really not thinking cosmetic right now. I just want to walk into my home and, and know that it's safe. So the tray is going to be 29 by 45 inches. It's completely unsquare, the shower stall, so we'll fill it with thin set. Double check the height of the glass. And you're gonna have to center the drain because it's 16 inches from the back wall to the center of the drain, 13 inches to the curb. Yeah, right there. This is this short, but it's okay, we can build up. This is okay. Now we're trying to use the old shower glass. It saves a client a couple thousand bucks. But in order to do that, we have to exactly match the old uh, distance here. Well, the pan that we're gonna put down here, we've gotta make it fit, so this drain is on dead center. So I'm measuring the distance to each wall on the pan, and then I'll cut them off. And then it should just drop right in. Hey, Dezzo, can you jump up on the ladder and get your hand sort of where mine is here? Yeah. I gotta get you to just put that in there like that. Like the top of the pipe, like that, sort of hits the top. Perfect, right there. Hold it there. Holding, still holding. All right, now down a bit. Okay, now I need you to ram that up in there if you can. All right, push, yeah, push, 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 push. You're the man, you got it. Well, that one lift up and on this side lift up. Right, gotcha. It's like a puzzle. How much money they spend on this? I heard $60,000 the lady before did a kitchen and bathroom. And the cost here is a good 20 grand on what we'll have to do to uh, fix everything. That's a lot of money for $321 error. Well, just like I promote, bring in the right people for the right jobs. I don't do granite. I do many things. I don't do granite. We call in the right people to take care of that. I bring in the pros. Granite will last forever, but you, it's not like you can drop cans of goods out on top of it. You know, it is a stone. It is a very hard stone, but you've got to be cautious with it. Excellent. Looks damn good, doesn't it? Mm. Man, is that wall that's square. The whole kitchen wall goes out like this. See, what's happening here is from this countertop to that countertop are three-eighths of an inch difference. So as soon as the stove goes in, you're going to see it. So either push this one in, where we lose on the end, or pull this one out. So the simplest way is to cut the end of the countertop, pull it out, and we'll equal the distance of how far this is out on this side to how far this is out on this side. And we create the illusion that it's right. Gorgeous black granite countertop going in today. And uh, this does not get screwed from underneath. They'll be doing an adhesive to hold it down. Just enough to make sure it doesn't move at all. We got the tray in and then I brought this up with some thin set just on this side because the floor does slope in. And now I'm gonna lay the Schluter product in and uh, seal it up to here anyway. That should be adequate for what we're looking at and once we seal all the tile, it It'll be uh, virtually waterproof. So I gotta put a mortar bed down here and I'm gonna lay in the curdy membrane. Normally, yeah, you'd go all the way up the wall, but obviously the water's gonna be in the shower pan. And uh, after all the work we've done for this client, we're pretty much out of money after granite countertops and whatnot. To redo this shower stall would affect the whole washroom and would just take uh, <laughs> a lot of time and a lot of money. But uh, this will actually last, uh, this should last forever. From now on, they shouldn't have any problems with this. Now that that's all done, we're ready to tile. And this tile that we're gonna use is marble. Light colored natural stones are very porous and they absorb. So we gotta be careful with what type of adhesive you use with this. If you use a, a gray thin set, what happens is over time, it wants to bleed through and you'll start to see blotches come through on your marble. So to uh, take care of that problem, they come up with this white based thin set. It's a polymer based thin set. I mean, even after six hours, it's hard for you to move the tiles. It starts to set, but it, you, you've got to let it set overnight and cure overnight before you should attempt to walk on it or anything like that. Now, so the same principle applies when you're finished. You have to seal this. If you don't seal this and you go to apply your grout, the same thing can happen. It'll want to absorb and it'll disfigure the tile. So it's really important to put a good sealer on it and allow it six hours to dry before you grout. And then grout, wash it down, and then seal it again. We like to do three coats of sealer. 
once you seal it and you get to grow it, you see these little indentations, the natural formation of the stone? When you grow, you see how it fills in? And that adds like character, makes it look natural. So the same type of thing is gonna happen when you do this down here on it. And then that will help pull it together. It's gonna even blend in that much more. Benji has been tiling all weekend with Sean. They've done a great job here getting up the backsplash. I really like it, it's starting to come together. You can see the gap here. So this is something I'd like to fix right now. Get some shims under it and bring it up. I'm in. <laughs> These are very important tools in this business. Good there? Happy with that. Looks a lot better, Mike. If you don't use them, your work sucks. Final day. Ready to make this go away. With some good thoughts. She looks damn good. I really like it. It's starting to come together, isn't it? It is, yeah. Steve over there, he's painting away. We're gonna have Sandy and Alfonso finish off the electrical, get the face plates in, the switches and receptacles in, and we still have to get the sink taps installed, the drain. Yeah. Let's get this done. Let's get it cleaned up. Let's get the owners back in here. Uh, we've had them out of their house for over two weeks now, and it's just because we had to go get permits and fix the structure and all the plumbing and the ceiling up there. Uh, not to mention we made such a mess, they didn't have really a shower to use, they didn't have the kitchen to use, so there was no sense in being here. I said, please leave. <laughs> make it easy on you and make it easy on me, and they did. They went to a family member's, and I'm sure they're just going to be dying to get back here today. I know they're dying to take a look at this. Benji and Sean did a great job finishing off the tiles and the threshold in the shower. Got a couple of pros upstairs reinstalling the tempered glass. All I have to do now is silicone the joints around the tub. We have a crack from the grout across here, so there's no edge, no lip, more than likely no membrane to make it watertight. We need some clear silicone across the grout here where there is a crack. I don't want to use any type of colored silicone here simply because it will stand out like a sore thumb. Clear is about your best silicone on the market. It will act as an adhesive as well as a sealant. I'm using a silicone that is mold and mildew free. You notice why your silicone in the corner sometimes has mold and mildew all over it it's because it's not mildew resistant. I'm going to take apart the taps and the faucet and make sure it's nice and sealed around here. A lot of plumbers will just put in their taps and, and not seal it around the tub. Very important. All right, I think we're ready to get in the house back. Sorry to keep you waiting. You ready to come home? Yes. Yeah. Come on in. <laughs> I'm ready to go home. <laughs> Let me tell you. Please, up to you. Wow. Hard to believe we actually done it in here. Wow. Oh my God, it's totally a whole new house. Wow. <sighs> Does this mean you like it? I love it. It's amazing. Thank wow. you. You're it welcome. looks gorgeous. It's wow. really beautiful. My God, granite countertop, it's unbelievable. Look, no crack. <laughs> yeah, the crack seems to have disappeared. <laughs> we pulled it all down. Your ceiling is now level. It's all new lighting. It's all new electrical. It totally looks level now. Yeah. You can totally see the difference. And the lights are beautiful. We gave you a center light there, and I was going to put one in, but I thought, you know what? You have your own taste. You pick right. the light, put it in. This is so gorgeous. I can't believe it. What a difference. Well, I tried to pick up the color from the countertop as well as the cabinets mm -hmm. and make it as also warm to match any color you might want to put on the wall. So to me it worked. It was whether or not uh, adding the two colors worked for you. It's stunning. The two colors. It's really is, stunning. Oh, it's amazing. I love it. Gotta start prepared. cooking right away. I can't wait to cook. <laughs> and, you sink to and it's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And also I think, you know, sacrificing the done. island was like a good thing. Really just, beautifully done. Well, I like your idea of yeah. the, just putting out a rolling island. Mm -hmm. That yeah. way you can like put it against the wall or take yeah. it out when you want it. Yeah. yeah. So we did fix this. I had to shim this up and right. fix the levelless. Everything was unlevel, unsquare. Yeah. We took out all the electrical, rerouted that down to the panel. We lost the knob and tube that was up here because it was just no good anymore. And mm -hmm. we don't want it in there. Yeah. So we had that removed. Your tub was leaking like you wouldn't believe. The shower stall was leaking like yeah. crazy. All new plumbing, mm -hmm. restructured. We went and got a permit for all of it, and we took care of it. We actually opened up this whole section here, cut into your old stack, rerouted all the plumbing. We had to run in three vent lines, vent it up through your bedroom, up through the roof. Small crack, little leak, look what it led to. You know, you can't check out people enough. You can't know enough about who's coming into your home. What does it take? Five minutes, ask questions, until you're satisfied with the answers. Come on, take a look. Wow, look at this. The 
crack's gone. Yep. Oh, that's all new. We yeah. actually took up the whole bottom all uh -huh. the way across. We pulled out three layers of concrete for some strange reason. He laid three layers. All the membrane was incorrect. What they did was just cut around it, cement it, put down the tiles, no sealant, no yeah. silicone. Well, there was no yeah, leak in the plumbing. It yeah. was all around the plumbing. If you read the small print, they're not liable for anything. So you cannot go back on your home inspector. You want to make sure, just like your contractor, you check him out find out how long he's been in the business, what type of experience his background is before he became a home inspector. In this home, for $321, we had a major screw up. We'd have been swimming in our kitchen if that had been fixed. I'm surprised the tub wasn't in your kitchen. Are you serious? Yeah. Being a professional home inspector, he should have asked, did they require permits for this job? Your lawyer can find out if permits were obtained in the last two years on your home. You want to make sure that if any work was done, was it done with permits? I can't even express how happy I feel compared to what I was feeling like just weeks ago. Thanks, Mike. Oh man, you're welcome. It's beautiful. You are so welcome. Thank you. It's what I do. It's what I'm supposed to do. Mike, hey. Max. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Appreciate sir. It. You're Appreciate absolutely it. You're welcome. I don't think there is a law out there that protects the homeowner. All these laws protect the contractors. The only protection a homeowner has is permits. That's it. By the way, uh, I'd like to apologize for the house. It's not your fault. Oh, it's not your fault. What did you do wrong? Uh, we picked it? No. We didn't inspect it properly. No. I don't know that we're going to do, but... Uh, well, yeah, you hired the wrong inspector. Yes. There's no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah. It's a shame that you didn't get a good enough uh, home inspector that at least would explain what was done in this house and give you an idea of what you would have to spend to fix it. Yeah. That's the shameful part. It was the lady that had this house before you that hired all the wrong contractors in the city. Whoever walked in this house just ruined everything. It would have been better to leave it the way it was to have old cabinets. It just blows me away. I had to keep looking at it going, where do I stop? Where do I stop without tearing your house down?